Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I think uh, 2.20 is not such a bad time. After a very lovely lunch, I guess I'm not going to put you to sleep. All of us have a problem in life. When we were very young, up to the age of maybe 25, I think we have all the time, we have all the energy, but we have no money. But when you grow up, I think you have all the money and you have all the energy up to the age of maybe from 35 to 55, but unfortunately you have no time. Maybe after 55, you have all the time, you have all the money, you have no energy. Friends, science, innovation has to happen now and not tomorrow. Because science is all about asking the question why and understanding the nature and going behind to find the answer to your question. Engineering is asking the question why not. But a good technology, you don't ask any question. It should work 200 times out of 100 times. That is why technologies can transform nations. Technology can actually change the way we live. But to really figure out how technology works, you also need very good basic engineering in addition to basic science. Only when these two synergize, you will have an innovation or a product. This is the view of our laboratory, where every bit of instrument that you see was predominantly built by the students of our lab. We have about 25% of imported equipment, but rest of all is actually built there. So what is this idea that I am talking about? Maybe I would need some help from people who can actually blow up a balloon. I'll just show you a very simple experiment before we move ahead. I am sure all of you just leave, leave out this. It's fine. It's all tied up. Okay, just hold it. It's fine. I am sure that all of you would have burst a balloon in your uh, birthday, I suppose. I'm just trying to show you that I have just blown some air here. And obviously, when I slowly open this, what do you expect to happen? It actually shrinks. And if I do it ever so slowly, then the volume shrinks and you don't hear anything. And over a period of time, whatever air that was packed here is actually escaping out. Nothing much happens. Right? This is something which we have normally demonstrated. On the other hand, if I just live it, all the air basically came out so suddenly, it is Newton's second law at work. You had some amount of little bit of thrust that was actually generated. But this is something all of you are very popular in doing. I have just created a shock wave. In nature, if energy needs to be released suddenly, shock is one of the most preferred means. And in fact, in aeronautics, whenever you have a vehicle, for example, this is a 338 bomber which is going to fly very high, you always have the shock. So we are always interested in what is the location of this shock with reference to the body, but in nature you would find them everywhere, starting from a birth of a new star, or when you fire a, bulb, fire a cannon you have a shock. And the very unique property of this shock is when it travels through a medium, there is an instantaneous increase in the pressure of the medium. And when I say instantaneous, it can happen in a few microseconds. Micro is how much? 10 to the power of minus 6. So I am not even talking about one second. So in all our laboratory, we are always interested in trying to play around with the shock. As aerospace engineers, we don't want this very close to the body because then the temperature would be extremely high when these waves are closer to the body. So just to say that if I have a shock wave, I can actually create a very nice temperature rise and pressure rise. Another example would be we have done some amazing experiment where if you have an apple, expose that to shock. It actually remains apple from outside, but I can actually put a straw and start drinking the juice. It becomes soft so much inside. So a lot of fascination things, fascinating things started happening. In fact, for us in aerospace, if you have a Mars probe, you would always see a shock wave. So we want to know, push the shock away from the body. Or the standard experiment that you would have seen is the Kalpana Chawla kind of experiment. When a probe re-enters, the whole the probe would be actually glowing. Temperatures would be extremely high. So using this unique property, we thought, can you not do something very interesting? And one of the application was, we wanted to actually see whether you can deliver painless injection to the human body using these shocks. Obviously, in the open literature, people have been chasing for the last 20 years, but till date, we don't have a successful product which you can claim can actually get rid of the needle. People have talked about micro needle, people have talked about so many other things, but yet we have not really reached there. And it all began many years ago while I was working in Japan, where I had a doctor who is now in Harvard Medical School. And then now people should really not get uh, hooked on to diseases like, say, cancer. Cancer is such a deadly disease. After they remove all the cancerous cell, they usually have this radiation treatment. 
I am sure you would have heard about it. But then that radiation treatment is the brute force by which you kill all the residual cancer cells which are there in that locality. So the doctor was asking me, can you give me something where I can deliver the anti-cancer drug right at the source without using a needle? And many a times you do not know where these tumors are actually. They can be in all kinds of places. And today you have the anti-cancer drug, but you have no means of delivering it exactly to the target because these cancer cells are extremely hard. It's very difficult for us to penetrate. So we thought, can you actually try to use a laser? And I will show you one of the photographs here, which is actually when you remove the cancer cell from this portion, then this is how it looks like. So originally we thought, can we use a laser to create a small tiny shock in an area of millimeter by focusing the laser? That is how the whole work began about 10, 15 years ago. But then we found that this is not going to really work out. And we started looking at some very unusual experiment of trying to recreate some kind of an explosion in the lab using tiny amount of explosive. All of you would have burst crackers in the Diwali day. Actually, you create a small blast wave or a shock wave every year, year after year. If you notice, we have been reducing the decibel levels of all these things over the years because it's rather harmful to your ears. Now, we said, if you can create such tiny explosions, can you use the mechanical impulse out of that explosion to put either a DNA or a drug inside the dermis? So that is how the whole idea was born. And then if you really look at the human skin, many of the pharma companies may not really like it. But then the reality is, all of you have taken up vaccines, right? Do you have a mark in your skin? And that mark used to be very big for your parent, but nowadays it is actually very small. And the reason for that is whenever those needles go down, they actually kill a lot of cells here. And the reaction to that injection is what you actually see outside as an infection. But then, there is one very interesting part called as a Lagerhand cell, which is just below your dermis. And they are at a depth of about 100 microns. If you can, these are all free floating cells, which will always be moving around. If you can deliver your drug exactly to that location, then the natural immunosystem gets triggered. You don't really need to take so much of antibodies. We have shown in this study that you need only one tenth of the drug that is normally required to give you resistance. And we said, can you really target this particular Lagerhand cells which are free floating all around our body? That is how we began this exercise. And we said, can we actually create a very, very tiny system of load some explosives in a tube, put a drug cartridge, and then try to see if you can just inject and push it through your human skin. And where are we right now? We have still done exhaustive animal experiment. And in fact, the mice is very happy to have this because it doesn't even feel the pain. Because the drug does not actually go deeper than 120 microns below your skin. And your nerve endings are actually much lower than that. So, but when a needle pushes you, it's actually about a couple of millimeters. And that's the reason the micro needle, which is actually lesser than that, it goes to a depth of about 2 millimeters. And we are not in a position to really absorb or overcome the pain. But of course, before this really becomes a part of human trials are currently beginning. And it's going to be at least quite some time, maybe about two, three years before you really see this in the market. But what is very interesting is we have been able to do a lot of trials and really figure out that this method indeed actually works. And the good thing is explosions on a large scale is very bad. But explosion at a micro scale is very useful. And you can create a very tiny shock wave, exactly like how I burst a balloon the mechanical impulse to put a drug or a DNA inside. But we said that explosives are not really a good idea. Can you not use a solar power? So one of the dream that we have is maybe for the cell phone, which has become very popular, I would cover a solar panel. One day I will have drug cartridge in my jaw or my, my pocket. I'll just remove it and insert it whenever someone wants to take an insulin injection. And you can actually create such tiny shock waves using solar energy very usefully. So we have built a prototype and the trials have shown extremely good results. So this is a 150 micron drug being pumped out because of the shock wave. So maybe in few years from now, you will have a cell phone covered with solar panel. You will have another drug cartridge which you can attach and then have an injection when you're walking by. And uh, these things are certainly not going to be something which uh, would not work out. Certainly it would start playing. This is another one on the mice which I have shown you you can actually have the injection and the mice doesn't really feel the pain. So this mice has got the same characteristics of a human skin, which gives a lot of confidence that this is going to work in reality. But as we move along, there have been some very amazing experiences and things that have happened. One of the things 
I am sure all of you would have caught cold here and when the cold becomes very bad, you would have gone to the doctor and the first round of antibiotics does not work and they say have one more round of antibiotics. In fact, the resistance to antibiotic has become so, so high today all because of this biofilm formation. This biofilm is a very thin film which forms on all your local area where infection is there and it is almost like an underground bunker of a terrorist. In fact, millions of millions of bacteria they join together and when they want to have food or breathe out, they just move, allow the uptake of food and then they close. Very hard to penetrate them. People die because the antibiotics cannot actually go and act over there. Till now, there has been no device to really look at these things and we have found that you can actually use these shock waves very usefully and I never imagined in my life 10 years ago, this is a tube which we use in aerospace engineering. I actually ended up putting a mouse right inside that. And tomorrow, I am not really overemphasizing as a scientist, I am making this statement with a lot of confidence. There will be a chamber where you would walk in, have a dose of shock and walk back, but your antibiotics will start acting much better and because the biofilm actually gets disrupted. So this is something which is a very fascinated one and I am sure that uh, you would really have these kind of devices actually coming out. And the good thing is the strength of these waves are very, very small. It's a all of the order of about 0.5 times the atmospheric pressure and it doesn't really hurt. Mice did not even figure out that it has been hit by a shock. And in fact, the studies have been very fascinating and uh, I think a couple of, a uh, lot of attention is garnered to this because ciprofloxin started acting much better and this has thrown up some amazing work like people who have got diabetes, their wound doesn't really heal. They have an infection, it doesn't heal. But surprisingly, if you use shock waves, you really figure out that you will be in a position to actually heal the wound very easily without any problem. And you can actually see the ciprofloxin loaded particles along with shock wave seems to work much better. So we are really now started thinking even people who have these sinusitis and those kind of infection, you will really have a very exotic chamber where people can walk in, have a dose of shock and walk off. And probably you will be in a position to take less amount of antibiotic. Maybe you will put few doctors out of business. And in fact, we have been able to do insulin delivery in a very interesting manner. And you don't really need to take insulin every day. And if you take insulin one day and have dosage of the shock, actually the release becomes much better. Thereby, you are again saving the patient from all the hardship that they are going to face. And uh, this is quite fascinating for us that you have the ciprofloxin loaded particle or the insulin loaded particle. Just allow the shock to go through that and you really feel that the overall effect is actually going to be extremely good. Now, I just realized that I am coming to the end of the talk that there are five very important ingredients for any innovation. Thanks to my colleague in the management science department in Indian Institute of Science, Professor Akhilesh, when we were discussing, he said the Panchabhutas are very critical. And I am sure that you know about earth. Earth represents people and you need fire in your belly to be a leader and the leadership actually rep represented by fire. And you need a very broad vision of thinking that the entire world belongs to you. That is what the sky is all about and you need amazing networking skill like a water which flows maybe from top of a mountain all the way up to the sea and then of course you need air to breathe in. So any innovation you also need some amount of money. But this is not really sufficient, you also need intensity and focus, only then probably you will have a new product coming out and then we said in academic world we always do ideas but it never works out. How is it you are really going to make a product? Then we said we are going to make a plunge ourselves. And we again remembered Swami Vivekananda, if you can win, you will lead and if you lose, you can guide. And that is what we do in the lab anyway, every day trying to guide students for their PhD or master's program. So we started our own company and some of the products which has come out are very interesting, very unusual. Every day the morning cup of tea that you take, I never thought that it is such a complicated business. But then if you expose that to shockwave, you now have a tea which has got 30% more polyphenol which means that you now have an anti-cancer tea and we have been able to scale this up and build a device which is now commercially being used in couple of places where more than 60,000 kilograms of tea leaves are being treated with shockwave which incidentally happens to be the first technology intervention in the entire tea industry in the last 120 years where India can really take a leadership role. So this is something which we never thought uh, would happen. And of course finally with all of these things you would have a doubt whether we will reach a stage in the near future where people would be able to take injections without any problem so that they could go to a doctor 
and just have a small pocket and then it just gets into that and then you will be able to solve most of the issues. And finally, all these things can happen only when science really becomes a part of your national passion and the quest of knowledge has to become really a national passion. On the Beijing airport when you walk off, this really caught my attention. This they call as the Beijing spirit where they say patriotism, innovation, inclusiveness, virtue. And I really do not know what should be the national passion for India. Can we say science and innovation quest for knowledge can become our national etho? More and more products can come out from the annals of academic institution for the common good. Maybe people will start looking at scientists or engineers with lot more respect when we can make their life lot better. And that is only possible provided we think of the common problems that are associated with people. Products have to actually come out which would make life and science is all about asking the question why and engineering is all about asking the question why not and of course technology is something where you don't ask any of your questions. But then if you want to really do this, I am reminded of a very nice example. I am sure all of you would have eaten dosa here. Uh, how many of you have seen a dosa tava? You have seen? If you would put a drop of water on a dosa tava, what do you expect? It just instantaneously evaporates. Same drop of water if it is there on a lotus leaf early in the morning when the sun shines on that, it actually looks like a diamond. But alas, even that drop of water is not going to last on the leaf forever because when the wind blows, even that is going to go away. But the same drop of water if it is going to be between two shells, gets buried deep in the sea for almost say a couple of years, you actually mine it back and it becomes an invaluable pearl. Ladies and gentlemen, it is us for us to decide whether we want to become a drop of water on a dosa tava or a drop of water on a lotus leaf or an invaluable difficult water drop of water wherein you can become a pearl in our life and it is for us to say please live a mark before you go as Swami Vivekananda said thank you very much for your attention I will be happy to answer any questions.